So, you have a Transformers sequel for me? I got a bunch of explosive action scenes with some dialogue in between that kind of explains why they're happening. Oh, that's close enough for sure. So what happens in this thing? Well, the US military's working with the Autobots to take on Decepticons around the world, right? Okay. So these humans are in a huge fight and Shanghai is just getting destroyed. Very cool. So then they release Optimus Prime and he just kicks a bunch of butt, straight up executes a Decepticon on the spot. Why didn't they unleash him in the first place? Because that works. So then the US government manages to cover up the fact that there was a giant robot fight, which is what they did with whatever happened in the first movie too. How'd they manage that? I mean, giant robots crash through city buildings in broad daylight in front of thousands of people. Yeah, well, I mean, they do all that stuff off screen and in between movies, so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, is that how that works? It is. So anyway, we're gonna meet up with Sam Witwicky and he's getting ready to go to college. Oh, he is? Yeah, so we're gonna spend a bunch of time with his parents and their dogs who won't stop humping each other. This all sounds like stuff that people want to see in a Transformers movie, sure. But then it turns out that Sam has a shard of the AllSpark stuck on his sweater. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this thing burns through the floor and lands on the kitchen table. It doesn't burn through that? For some reason it doesn't. And then it turns all the appliances into robots and imprints stuff onto Sam's brain because he touched it. That happens from touching a sliver of the AllSpark. Wasn't he holding the entire thing in the last movie? There's no way for me to check that. Well, and then Sam tells Bumblebee that he can't come to college with him and Bumblebee does that thing where he talks through the radio. Didn't he get his voice back at the end of the last movie? Well, okay, I mean, how am I supposed to remember every single thing that happened in the first movie? Well, I mean, you can watch the first movie. No, I can't. I put a bagel in my DVD player. Oh, okay. Well, it might work if you take the bagel out. Oh, I doubt it, because then I put the DVD player in the oven and set it to broil, because I still wanted the bagel. That's fair. Well, okay, I guess we'll do whatever we want in this one, then. That's what I'm thinking. So what else happens? Oh, well, the Decepticons use another shard from the AllSpark to bring Mega Tron back to life from the bottom of the ocean. Isn't the AllSpark what killed him in the last movie? All right, listen, sir, I'm gonna need you to either get me a new DVD player or get all the way off my back about the last movie. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. So anyway, then Sam's parents bring him to college and his mom accidentally eats a pot brownie, so she immediately tackles someone, which is maybe how those things affect people. It might be. And then eventually Sam starts seeing all these crazy symbols because of the AllSpark and this hot girl starts to show some real interest in him. Nice, 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 nice. And so then they start making out and his girlfriend Michaela walks in, but then it turns out this hot girl is a Decepticon, so they have to run away. Decepticons can take the form of humans? Walking, talking humans, sir, yeah. Why don't they do that all the time? Why pretend to be cars to blend in? Unclear. Well, okay then. So then eventually Optimus Prime saves Sam, but he gets killed by Megatron. Oh, so they use the AllSpark sliver to revive him? Nope, why not? I don't know. Fair enough. So then what happens? Also, we're gonna find out that Megatron has a boss and his name is The Fallen. And what's his deal? Well, he wants to come to Earth and harvest the sun, and only a prime can kill him. Why? Oh, because reasons. Understandable, sure. And so to use this sun harvesting machine, he needs to find something called the Matrix of Leadership. Oh, another thingy. We got a bunch of thingies in these movies. We sure do, sir. So a long time ago, a bunch of primes used their own dead bodies as a barrier to hide this thing. The only ones who can kill The Fallen are primes, and they all kill themselves? That's the strategy they went with. So they had both this Matrix thing and the Sun Harvester machine in the pyramids in Egypt. They killed themselves, the only ones who can kill the Fallen, and then left the key to his death machine right next to the death machine. Yeah, in Egypt, in the pyramids. Wow, well, it's gonna be hard for the main characters to get to Egypt from the States. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they find this old, old Decepticon who turned good, and his name is Jetfire. Oh, so he can turn into a jet. He can, he can turn into a jet. So they just fly to Egypt. Oh. Yeah, that would have made sense. No, they're gonna teleport. What? Yeah, this flying robot who can turn into a jet, he can teleport, so that's how they're gonna get there. I... Okay. So then a lot of these pages just say the word explosion. What's gonna explode? Oh, just all of it, I guess. That works. And then some bad robots are gonna combine into a really big robot called Devastator. And this thing's like a big vacuum. Oh no. Yeah, and so like some human characters will hide behind a van and stuff. And this thing will just inhale that van, no problem. Oh, selective sucking is tight. Gross. And then this Devastator thing's gonna be on top of a pyramid. And that guy Simmons from the last movie, he's gonna be like, I am directly below the enemy scroll. 
scrotum. Oh, this transformer has a scrotum. Yeah, this transformer has a scrotum. Well, all right, we'll have somebody from the visual effects team spend hours and hours making robot testicles. I think it's important to use a chunk of the budget on a robot scrotum, yeah. I agree. Anyway, so then the really bad robot's gonna come to Earth because he wants to blow up the sun using the pyramids. These are things that you've written, and we're gonna spend a lot of money to bring them to life. That's what's happening here, and nobody's stopping it. So then that Simmons guy, he's gonna call the Navy and be like, I used to be in a secret organization, and you need to listen to me. Okay. And then he's like, I need you to fire your massive railgun at the Pyramid of Giza. And they're like, all right, let's do it. The Navy fires at one of the wonders of the world because a stranger told them to? That's right, sir, they do. Wow, 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 wow. And then Sam's gonna end up dying. That's fatal. Actually, no, it's not, sir. See, he goes to robot heaven, and some robots are like, hey, Sam, congrats, now you've earned the ability to use the Matrix. So then he comes back to life and revives Optimus. Shia LaBeouf's gonna go to robot heaven, and we're gonna immortalize that image in cinematic history. Yeah, and so now that Optimus is alive, he's gonna kick everybody's butts, and it's gonna be practically impossible to understand what's going on visually. Very cool. And then right before he kills the Fallen, you know what he's gonna say? Uh, something cool, I bet. He's gonna say, give me your face. Uh, and then Megatron escapes, because we're gonna need him for sequels, probably. Of course. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, you know? Probably not the best movie of the year. But not the worst. But not the worst. Hey everybody, Ryan here, that's me, thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. You can also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. As always, check back soon for a new one. Bye. Bye. Bye.